<laughs> Hello and welcome to Veterans Medals Workshop. Glad to have you with us today because we're finally arriving at part four of the Military Medals of the United States. We're going to take a look at the medals from the end of World War I, 1919 so to speak, all the way up to 1946-47. And the reason I say that past World War II is that many of the medals that veterans should have received were not available until 1946 or 1947. So we'll take a look at all of the medals going up to World War II, and then we'll take a look at the decorations, the good conduct medals, and all of the campaign medals and the qualifications for them during World War II. And a number of medals that were awarded after World War II to veterans such as combat infantrymen and combat medics. And uh, I think you'll find it fascinating so if you enjoy these shows, please give us a thumbs up. Even better, subscribe. It'll keep us on the air. And special thanks to Medals of America and Fountain Inn, South Carolina, for backing this show. Okay, come on. Let's go take a look at the medals leading up to and during World War II. We're going to cover all of the decorations and service medals leading up to World War II and during World War II, so we'll move fast. If you want more detail on individual medals, we have over 175 videos out there on the Veterans Medals YouTube channel, so you can find what you want. The first medal we'll look at is the Marine Corps Expeditionary Medal, and it was for opposed landings on foreign territory or operations deserving special recognition. It was initially a ribbon-only award, and it was instituted in 1919, but retroactive to 1874. What is unique is the W, silver W letter that goes on the ribbon, and the Wake Island Bar that is awarded for those Marines who served on Wake Island in World War II, a very rare Wake Island Bar. The next medal is unusual. It's a World War I Army of Occupation of Germany medal, and it wasn't really instituted until 1942, but it was for 1918 to 1923, serving in the occupation of Germany or Austria-Hungary. What's really neat, if you look down in the lower right-hand corner, the original ribbon had scalloped red edges. The medallion has a picture of General Pershing on it and the back of raised American eagle. There were only a few campaign medals leading up to World War II, and one of them was the second Haitian campaign medal for the United States Navy and Marine Corps, personnel who helped garrison and restore order to Haiti in the period of 1919 to 1920. The medal is shown here with a rendering of the island of Haiti on the front of the medallion, and the back of it has the eagle on an anchor, one for the United States Navy personnel and one for United States Marine Corps personnel. Original medals were all numbered on the rim, and the one shown here in the bottom left is number 213. Next award is the Brevet Medal, and the Brevet Medal is one of the rarest U.S. decorations and was already out of date by the time it was approved. And it's not a current award, but in 1921, the Secretary of the Navy authorized the Brevet Medal for Marine Officers for Distinguished Conduct in Public Service in the Presence of the Enemy. Smedley Darlington Butler, shown over on the right, was one of those Marines who received the Brevet Medal. He also had two Medal of Honors, and maybe 16 other medals. <laughs> it said he had a Marine Corps Eagle Globe and Anchor tattooed on his chest. <laughs> yes, give me some feedback on that one. There were only 23 medals issued. Two other Navy and Marine Corps campaign medals issued during the 20s were starting on your left, the second Nicaraguan campaign medal, and that was for service ashore in Nicaragua between 1926 and 1933 to put an end to local violence. On your right is the Yangtze Service Medal for Navy and Marine Corps personnel. It was instituted in 1930 for service in 1926 to 1932 on the Yangtze River Valley or in surrounding Chinese waters. Chinese junk on the front of the medal. Unique medal for the period was the NC4 medal for the United States Navy and Coast Guard. It was instituted in 1929 for flights during 1919. Actually, it was awarded to naval personnel who participated in the first transatlantic flight with Curtis Army seaplanes from May 8th to May 31st of 1919. Sort of first joint service operation, I guess. Close-up of a Navy pilots flying an Army seaplane. 
the end of World War I, there were only four decorations for valor in the United States military. The Army and Navy Medal of Honor and the Army Distinguished Service Cross, the first version being shown, and the Navy Cross. The Army Distinguished Service Medal and the Navy Distinguished Service Medal were for meritorious service. But that was about the change. President Calvin Coolidge authorized the Distinguished Flying Cross in 1926. It is awarded to United States military personnel for heroism or extraordinary achievement during aerial flight that's not routine. It was the first decoration authorized in identical design and ribbon to all branches of U.S. Armed Forces, Army, Navy, Army Air Force, and Coast Guard and Marine Corps. Captain Charles A. Lindbergh was the first recipient of a Distinguished Flying Cross for his solo flight across the Atlantic, and it could be awarded with various devices for valor or additional awards. In 1926, Congress authorized the Soldiers' Medal for Heroism to any member of the Army, National Guard, or Reserves for heroism not involving actual conflict with the enemy. The Bronze Octagonal Medal has it as, as its central feature a North American bald eagle with raised wings representing the United States. It also has 13 stars on the front, and the ribbon is made up of red and white stripes alternatingly to represent the 13 states. Although not authorized till 1942, this is a good place to mention the Navy and Marine Corps Medal, which is awarded for heroism, and it was also established by an act of Congress. And the medal was established to recognize non-combat heroism for acts of life-saving or attempted life-saving, and it involves risking your own life. The medal is a bronze octagon with an eagle perched on a fouled anchor. Beneath the anchor is a globe and below that inscription, heroism. And the back of the medal is blank for engraving. Before 1942, before World War II, the silver or gold life-saving medal, as shown on the right, was awarded for sea rescues involving risk of life. President John F. Kennedy was probably the most famous recipient of a Navy and Marine Corps medal, for his rescue of personnel from PT-109 during World War II. Silver Star Medal was instituted in 1932 and awarded for gallantry in action against an armed enemy of the United States or while serving with friendly foreign forces. It requires a level of valor less than the Medal of Honor and the Distinguished Service Cross or Navy Cross, and the Silver Star is derived from the Army Citation Star, a 3 inch diameter Silver Star device that was worn on the ribbon bar and suspension ribbon of the appropriate Army Campaign Medal for gallantry in action. And it was mostly applicable to World War I victory medals, but it dated back all the way to the Civil War. The actual medal was instituted in 1932, as I mentioned, and the first award was presented to General Douglas MacArthur, then the Army's chief of staff. The medal is a five-pointed star finished in gilt bronze, and in the center of the star is a 3 inch silver five-pointed star with a small wreath of laurel. The reverse of the medal contains the inscription for gallantry in action with a space to engrave the name of the recipient, and the ribbon colors are the national colors of the American flag. The Purple Heart Medal was established in 1932 and originally only for the United States Army, but President Roosevelt made it authorized for all members of the Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard in 1942. The medal is based on General Washington's badge of military merit. It is established in 1782. During World War II, the Purple Heart was originally last in order of precedence of all other personal decorations, but was elevated in 1985 by an act of Congress to a position just behind the Bronze Star. The medal is a heart-shaped gold rim medallion with the profile of George Washington on the purple enamel base, and above Washington's profile is the shield from his family's coat of arms. For military merit, is inscribed on the reverse with the place for the name to be engraved. And in early Purple Heart medals were numbered on the edge, but this ended in World War II. Example of a Purple Heart medal in a World War II presentation case, along with the certificate that comes with it. In 1939, the Secretary of the Navy established the Fleet Marine Corps Reserve Medal. 
Later, the name was changed to Organized Marine Corps Reserve Medal, and finally to Select Marine Corps Reserve Medal. The circular medal has two walking figures. The figure in the foreground is wearing a pre-World War II uniform, and the other is wearing civilian clothes. Above the figure is a raised inscription, Marine Corps Reserve, and below the figure is the inscription for service, and on the back, Fidelity, Zeal, and Obedience. The Navy Expeditionary Medal was authorized in 1936 for landing on foreign territories and operations against armed opposition for which no specific campaign medal had been authorized. It shows a sailor beaching a boat containing an officer and Marines with the flag of the United States and the word expedition. The reverse of the medal shows an American eagle perched atop an anchor and laurel reefs on both sides of the eagle are for service in the United States Navy. In addition to campaign stars, this medal is also authorized the rare W device and the Wake Island bar for those members of the Navy who served on Wake Island during World War II. In 1940, the China Service Medal was authorized for award to Navy and Marine Corps personnel as well as Coast Guard for service ashore in China or onboard naval vessels during 1937 to 1939. It was also authorized for service in the Formosa Straits in China and Taiwan during 1945 and 1957. The medal is a circular bronze disc showing a Chinese junk under full sail with the raised inscription China above and service below. And the reverse of the medal shows an American eagle perched on an anchor with floral wreaths. It's awarded to both members of the Navy and the Marine Corps, but is also authorized the Coast Guard. The service medal issued before World War II was the American Defense Service Medal, and it was issued to members of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, or Coast Guard for at least a year's service between 1939 and the beginning of World War II. In front of the medal is the Grecian figure Columbia, representing America or Liberty, holding a shield and a sword while standing on an oak branch, symbolic of the strength of the Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard. An inscription reads American Defense. The back of the medal is inscribed for service during the limited emergency proclaimed by the President on September 1939 or during the unlimited emergency proclaimed by the President in May 1941. The medal has a number of interesting bars, one for fleet, one for a base for the Navy, Foreign Service for the Army, and C for the Coast Guard, and the letter A for those members of the Navy that served in the Atlantic Fleet. Now we're going to take a quick review of all of the campaign and service medals that a World War II veteran would have had the opportunity to earn depending on where they served. If you want more detail on any of these medals, there's a complete video available for you on Veterans Medals Workshop. <laughs> By the way, almost all the material that you see on Veterans Medals Workshop comes from one of our books, which you can see behind me. Especially the Military Medals of America covers everything from the Revolution to the Global War on Terror. It's available for you on Amazon, and all of the books are now on sale for the next three months. So get them while you can. By the way, at the beginning of World War II, there were three major campaign areas. Starting on your left was the Pacific Theater, which had the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal, the American Theater in the center, which had the American Campaign Medal, and on your far right was the European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal. And now we'll take a look at each one of them. The American Campaign Medal covered the dates of 1941 to 1946 and was for service outside the United States in the American theater for 30 days or within the continental United States for one year. One of the medal shows a Navy cruiser, a B-24 bomber, and a sinking enemy submarine above three waves. In the background are some buildings representing the United States and above the inscription, American Campaign. The back of the medal shows an American eagle standing on a rock with the dates 1941 to 1945. The Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal covered the period of 1941 to 1946 and for service in the Asiatic Pacific Theater for 30 days or receipt of any combat decoration. 
The front of the medal shows a palm tree amidst troops with an aircraft overhead and an aircraft carrier, battleship, and submarine in the background. And the reverse has the American Eagle sitting on a rock with the dates 1941 to 1945. The devices include an arrowhead for assault landing, a bronze star for each campaign, or a silver star for five campaigns, and an eagle globe and anchor to go on to the ribbon for those Navy personnel who serve with Marine units. The European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal was issued between 1941 and 1945 for service in that theater for 30 days of receipt of any combat decoration. The front of the medal shows a landing ship tank, LST, unloading troops while under fire with an airplane overhead. The reverse has an American Eagle, symbol of power, standing on a rock. The medal itself wasn't designed till after World War II, and in fact, General Eisenhower is the one that insisted on the landing ship being shown. Devices are the same as the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal. The Army, Army Air Force, Navy, and Coast Guard mounted campaign stars horizontally on the ribbon of the medal, while the Marine Corps mounted the campaign stars vertically, as shown here. The Women's Army Corps Service Medal was authorized in 1943 for service in the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps or Women's Army Corps during 1942 to 1945. The front of the medal contains the head of Athena, the goddess of victory and wisdom, superimposed on a sword crossed with oak leaves and a palm branch. The sword represents military might. The oak leaves represent strength and the palm branch represents peace. Fewer than 100,000 women in World War II qualified for this service medal. It is the only United States service medal specifically created and authorized for women in the military. Brings us to the World War II Victory Medal. It was awarded for service in the armed forces during 1941 to 1946. The front of the medal depicts Liberty resting her right foot on a war god's helmet with the hilt of a broken sword in her right hand and a broken blade in her left hand. The reverse contains the words freedom from fear and want, freedom of speech and religion in the United States of America, 1941 to 1945. And the Victory Medal is slightly larger than all of the campaign medals, and it wasn't really struck or made available till 1946 or 1947. The Army of Occupation Medal is one medal that most World War II veterans were authorized but never knew because, well, it wasn't authorized till 1946, and most of the veterans were home by then. But it was authorized for service of 30 consecutive days in any one of the occupied territories of former enemies. Most veterans stayed over 30 days in an occupied country after the end of the war. The front of the medal depicts a Remagen Bridge on the Rhine River with the inscription Army of Occupation at the top, and a reverse depicts Mount Fujiyama in Japan with two Japanese junks in front of the mountain. Although not specifically authorized by regulations, many veterans receive the Occupation Medal with the reverse medallion if they were serving in Japan. Areas of occupation included Italy, Germany, Austria, Germany, West Berlin, Korea, and Japan. Gold colored C 54 airplane device is authorized to denote participation in the Berlin airlift. And the metal clasp inscribed Germany and Japan are authorized for the suspension ribbon on the metal for occupation service. The Navy Occupation Service Medal was offered as Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard veterans. Uh, it wasn't instituted till 1947, so you can see why a lot of veterans never knew they were authorized it. The medal has a circular bronze disc showing Neptune, the god of the sea, riding a sea serpent with the head and front legs of a horse. Neptune is holding a trident in his right hand and pointing out an image of land at the left of the medal with his left hand. The lower front of the medal depicts the ocean with the words Occupation Service in two lines. It was authorized for 30 days consecutive service in one of the occupied territories and also came with the C-54 for the Berlin Airlift and a class for Europe and a class for Asia. So the campaign medal is a World War II veteran of the Army. The Army Air Force could have earned or shown here the American Defense Medal, the American Campaign Medal, the Asiatic Pacific Campaign Medal, the European African Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, the Victory Medal, and the Occupation Medal.
War II veterans of the Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard would have been eligible for the same medals, except there would be a different occupation medal, as shown on the far right. During World War II, there were four Good Conduct Medals. Starting on your left was the Army Good Conduct Medal for the Army and the Army Air Force, then the United States Marine Corps Good Conduct Medal, shown from its suspension bar, and then the Navy Good Conduct Medal, and you'll notice it has a square ribbon on it, and the Coast Guard Good Conduct Medal. Most enlisted personnel would have been eligible and would have earned the Good Conduct Medal. Using a World War II Army veteran as an example, a soldier who served only in the American theater could have been eligible for the Good Conduct Medal, American Campaign, and Victory Medal. Most of the World War II soldiers and other members of the service who served in the uh, Asiatic Pacific would have earned the Good Conduct Medal, the American Campaign, the Asiatic Pacific Campaign, the Victory Medal, as well as most probably the Occupation Medal. Using an Army World War II veteran who served in Europe, the Middle East, or Africa, their campaign medals for an enlisted man could have been the Good Conduct Medal, the American Campaign, the Europe-African Middle East Campaign, the Victory Medal, and the Occupation Medal for Germany. I'd like to point out when the World War II veterans came home, they came home with ribbon bars because none of the campaign medals will struck until after the war, brass having been used for munitions. There is an exception because the decorations, the military decorations for valor, were struck. And so now we'll take a look at America's decorations for World War II. Up until 1944, the Army and Army Air Force Medal of Honor is shown on the left. It just hung from a blue suspension ribbon with white stars. In 1944, it was changed to a neck medallion as shown on the right. For more details, see one of our two videos on the Medal of Honor. From 1917 to 1942, the Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard Medal of Honor is shown on your left. It was referred to as a Tiffany Cross because of the original designer. But in 1942, the Navy went back to the original design of the Navy Medal of Honor and suspended it from a neck ribbon as shown here. So let me give you an overview of the World War II decoration. Starting in your upper left in 1919 was the Army Distinguished Service Cross and the Navy Cross, then the Army Distinguished Service Medal and the Navy Distinguished Service Medal. I pointed out in 1932 the Silver Star was established and the Legion of Merit was established in 1942 but backdated to 1939. The Distinguished Flying Cross, the medal in the far upper right, was established in the 20s, I've told you about that, and then down in the bottom left started with the Army Soldiers Medal, followed by the Navy and Marine Corps Medal, then the Bronze Star, which was established in 1944, but retroactive to 1941. We've already covered the Purple Heart, which was established in 1932, and then the Air Medal, which was established in 1942, but backdated to 1939. The Army Commendation Medal and the Navy Commendation Medal, the two medals to the bottom right-hand corner, were established at the end of the war but made retroactive to the beginning of the war. The Legion of Merit established in 1942 is a very handsome medal and it could be awarded for valor during World War II. Four variations of the Legion of Merit for award to foreign military personnel. The chief commander shown on your left was a breast badge commander of a Legion of Merit, officer of a Legion of Merit, and legionnaire of a Legion of Merit. One star medal could be awarded for both meritorious service and for valor. And if it was awarded for valor, a V device was affixed to the center of the ribbon. 1947, the War Department authorized all World War II veterans who had earned a combat infantry badge or combat medical badge to be awarded the Bronze Star Medal for Meritorious Service have the medals as shown here, especially if he had been wounded. The Bronze Star, the Purple Heart, the Good Conduct Medal, the American Defense, the European Service Medal with Battle Stars, and the Victory Medal along with the Occupation of Germany Medal. World War II Marine veteran of Okinawa might have a display looking like this with the Bronze Star. Three World War II Philippine military medals authorized members of the Army, Army, Air Force, Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard for service in the Philippines. They were originally issued as ribbons, but now they're authorized as medals. Starting on your left was the Philippine Defense Medal, 
and that was awarded for service in the defense of the Philippines between 8 December 1941 and 15 June 1942. In the center is the Philippine Liberation Medal, and that was for service in the liberation of the Philippines between October 1944 and September 1945. The final medal on the far right was the Philippine Independence Medal, and that was awarded to military personnel who had received both the Defense Medal and Liberation Medal or were on active duty on the 4th of July 1946 in the Philippines. Here's a nice example of a World War II Army Air Force veteran who put together a display of his medals to include in the lower right-hand corner the Philippine Liberation Medal and Philippine Independence Medal. Navy, Marine, and Coast Guard veterans did not know that the Combat Action Ribbon was authorized in 1979 and retroactive to 1941, and we have a separate video on that. The two most important unit decorations were the Army and Army Air Force Presidential Unit Citation and the Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard Presidential Unit Citation up by taking a look at a couple of examples of how families have put together their World War II veterans displays and we'll use Army Air Force examples and this one shows 25 pilots decorations service medals and his Philippine Liberation Medal. The family honored their grandfather who was an aerial gunner in the 8th Air Force in the European theater with this display. This incredible display honors an aerial gunner of the 9th Air Force who was shot down and even has his Stalag tag just above his medals on the right-hand side and his retroactively awarded Prisoner of War medal after his Air Medal. And some families like to honor their veteran with a display of his highest decoration, as in this case, the Distinguished Flying Cross, or in this particular case, the Air Medal, as shown on the left. <laughs> Thanks for joining us today to watch our show on the Military Medals of the United States from World War I past World War II. I hope you found it interesting and it answered some questions that might have been in the back of your mind. And if you have any special questions, of course, put them in the comments down below. And as always, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you can. It'll help stay, keep us on the air. All right. See you next time on Veterans Medals Workshop, which will be... Number five, the Korean War. Special thanks to Medals of America and Fountain Inn, South Carolina, for all of their support on these videos.